get this match underway. Claudio, of course, is the younger brother of Eklund Catchy, but you were telling us earlier today, Carl, he's uh, had a tough time recently, Eklund. Yeah, he's had an off-road car accident about three weeks ago. I believe he's only just got out of hospital as well. He's had operations on his arm. I think it's his right arm as well, so the arm that holds the cue. So he is out of action. Luckily, he's okay, which is the main thing. So I don't think we'll be seeing Catcher for a good couple of months. We know how high he was on the race to Moscone list, so it's going to be an interesting end of the year when he gets back to playing the game. Yeah, Catchy, this year's UK Open winner. And with Sanchez Ruiz already confirmed in the team, Catchy is effectively number one in the race for the second automatic spot. He can't really add any more points to it unless he makes a miraculous return for the US Open. Anyway, that's the older Catchy, the younger one. He's got us underway in this match. Maybe it not in the start he would have hoped. Okay, Alexander was back from Germany. This will give us an indication of where his game is at. Ball in hand, all the balls are sat in good positions. Well, that's not the best of starts. Ball in hand and missed the two ball. That is not going to make you feel good in your chair. Very rarely do you see that. Well, he's much the older man, Alexander Osbeck, 47 years of age, but very much the outsider. And as we always say, when you're in that position, you have to really make the most of all the opportunities that come your way, especially early on in the match. Show the favourite that you're here to compete. Second chance, though. I can only think Claudio was trying to cut the ball in. Wow, these are very disturbing indications if you're an Alexander Uzbek supporter in this one. Catchy's third match today. He beat Marcus Fistermuller 9 4 earlier on and was then involved in a generational clash with Britain's Chris Melling. A real close tussle all the way. Melling won at 9 8, which is why Catchy is here on the loser's side. debut on the international stage. The Spanish Open, we got to the last 16. This has been a little bit more like it from Claudio. Just got to make sure he avoids cannon in the nine ball there with the cue ball. This needs to bounce. This needs to bounce. Okay, so he's left a little thin one. A lot thinner than he would have wanted, but he's not messing about, is he? It's a one rack in, and already Alexander Uzbek has produced two fairly shocking misses. Teddy Okachi leads 1 0.
Christoph Reinches, who was a World Cup winner alongside Joshua Filler with Germany in 2021, is leading 4-1 in the All-German Clash with Andreas Daniel. Oliver Wortman, who we saw on the main table earlier. 4-3 behind against Indian Ashik Nathwani. John Mora in danger of going out at the hands of Mika van Berkel. Young Dutch player leading 6-4 in that one. Sullivan Clark, who was heavily beaten by Stuart Bingham earlier today. 5-1 up on Paul Taylor. Damien Massey, who we saw play Skylar Woodward, trailing 5-2 now against Christian Serdea. Remember, in this round, if you lose, that's it. You are out. moment looks like being another quick kill actually started off in that Spanish Open an absolute flyer beat Mohamed Sufi world championship runner-up this year a couple of other decent wins against Cheng Zhao Huai and Badr Alawadi to get through to single elimination and there he added wins over Christos Papa Georgiou very notably, the American Moscone Cup player, Tyler Steyer. There's another American, Skylar Woodward, who finally ended his campaign in the last 16, 10-5. At one stage, we were looking at the prospect of a Catchy Brothers semi-final, which is what would have happened if they both got that far. Eklund Kachi did go one round further, but was comfortably beaten in the quarters by the eventual winner, Dang Jin Hu. Tricky shot coming up here. It doesn't look like there's an obvious safety shot on. I wonder if he's going to have a swipe or a long bank shot. The eight ball, cue ball could go behind the eight ball. That's a, an option off the left side. Oh, he's gone for the bank. It's close, you know. It's close. And it's there. Good shot. It's lost the cue ball a little bit. But all the same, look at this bank shot. Uzbek hasn't actually played today. He beaten Miguel by Miguel Silva 9-4 yesterday and then played Yalo Cotton Army of Finland on the loser's side won that was looking like being a fairly efficient second rack for Claudio Cacci, but Alexander Uzbek is still in it and arguably has a chance to win it here. Yeah, he's got to be a little bit careful in the sense of don't take this match for granted. In a race to eight, things can start to get a little bit sketchy in no time. A bit of a shocker in the first rack, but much better in the second for Alexander Uzbek. He 
is sure to feel infinitely more comfortable now after leveling at one all. Nick Vandenberg, former World Cup runner-up with the Netherlands, leads Thomas Kirch 6-2. Remember, it's race to eight in this round. Bazar Spahu, another Albanian, leading 3-0 against Christos Papagiorgiou. João Grio, Portuguese player who went well at the Spanish Open, leading 6-4 over Michael Turkovsky. Kristina Zlateva of Bulgaria now leads Britain's G.J. Oyangoran 6-1. Nick Malai has a 3-2 lead over Andre Vansner. So a lot of quite familiar names involved in this round, including Ko Ping Chung, who was surprisingly sent over to the loser's side earlier today. And Ko Ping Chung has won 8-1 against Kalim Felix Stefanov. And now awaits the winner of this match. Trying to get through to round three of the loser side. If you get through that, you need one more win to make it to single elimination. One all here. That's unlucky. There's nothing you can do about that in the game of nine ball. Random ball kicking the cue ball. In, well, it didn't actually. I thought it was a ball. It was. It spun off the rail. Quite unusual, though. It was still a little bit unlucky, mind. Claudio Cacci, until recently, was primarily known as a snooker player. Started playing in international events six years ago at a very young age. And last year he was in the quarterfinals of the WSF Junior Open. And that's a very tough tournament, I can tell you. He had a win there against Ben Mertens, a highly rated young Belgian who's making waves on the pro circuit. Also got to the quarterfinals of the European Championships at under 16 and under 21 level last year. in the last 32 of the European Amateur Championship in Malta back in the spring of this year. He is the current Albanian snooker champion, came from 2-0 down to beat his brother, 3-2 in the semis, and then had a 3-0 win against Bizar Spahu in the final. He had been runner-up to Eklund previously in the Albanian Championship. So it seemed as though he was perhaps heading for a career in snooker, but there may be a rethink now after the events of recent months on the pool table. Yeah, that's good to see. If you're not quite comfortable on the shot, no matter how easy it is, just get back up, reset. It's another mistake. Oh, we didn't see this coming, did we? Back to those two awful misses Uzbek had in the opening rack. Kachi looked like he was going to very swiftly take the second. And now, in a few moments, in all probability, Uzbek is going to be leading 2-1. That's exactly what's happened. Tim de Reuter of the Netherlands has won 8-4 against Giuseppe Iacobucci. So de Reuter now two wins away from making single elimination. Another Dutch player, Nick Vandenberg, on the hill at 7-2 against Thomas Kirch. Billy Thorpe has taken the opener against Saki Kanatlar. Nick Malai, 3-2 up, and Andre Vansner. 
John Mora has won the 11th rack, but 6-5 down against Mika van Berkel. Sullivan Clark of New Zealand going well, 6-1 against Britain's Paul Taylor. Another British player, Damien Massey, also trailing, but just a couple behind against Christian Surdea at 5-3. Welshman Marcel Price leading Ramazan Akdag 2-1. Jonas Kornmesser of Austria has a 6-1 lead against Bernd Janka. Alexander Uzbek has a surprise 2-1 lead here. Okay, Claudio's back at the table. He's got to focus here. I've seen many a match start to get away from you, and then you've got to battle back, and you can really start to get a bit sketchy. Oh, that was a good effort. Draws the cue ball right back. Looked like the cue ball was going to be perfect. It got bumped to where it is now, but I think you can still maybe jack the cue up and pop this ball or he could maybe cut it in and if it's a lot thinner than it seems maybe use that top rail to bounce back down for the red three good to see Billy Thorpe back on the pool table at the WNT event he's playing over on table two he's 1-0 up at the moment Catchy's reputation in snooker. He's been doing well in pool on a more local level for a number of years now. Won the Pristina Open a couple of years ago, beating Eklund in the final. And earlier this year, he won the Balkan Championship. And there were players from a number of countries in that region. Greece, Serbia, Bulgaria, Kosovo, North Macedonia. Field of 73 players, and he won it undefeated. Seven wins out of seven. His performance at the Spanish Open wasn't entirely out of nowhere. That's a little gap he's looking at there. He can't overrun the cue ball because he won't be able to pot it because of the eight. And he's got to make sure he gets past this seven on the right-hand side. Good shot. From what we've seen of him in recent times, Carl, is there any aspect of Claudio Cacci's name, game that you feel stands out as something he needs to improve on if he's to become a top player? Probably just time on the table getting in this type of competition this situation obviously he can play with his brother and all and he's back to full health I mean watched him in Spain and just these opening three racks just a few decisions here and there but obviously these younger players that's kind of what you do when you're young don't you you're a bit raw with the experience there's always seems to be a right shot and a wrong shot. But he's a very good potter, he's a very good cueist as well. So if you often when you're a very good cueist, if you have a look here how still he stays on the shot. That's usually a good indication of the type of level. 
a player can reach. Declan Catchy did big things at a young age. He only played in one major, Claudio. That's the last 16, so he's following suit. And he's drawn level at two all here against Alexander Uzbek. Nick Vandenberg, very experienced Dutch player, has won 8 2 against Thomas Kirch. Bizarre Spahu, who we were mentioning there in an Albanian context, now leads 5 0 over Christos Papa Georgiou. Adam Stankovic just ahead of Dan Cristeo of Romania. 5 4 to the pole there. Saki Kanatlar has leveled at 1 0 with Billy Thorpe. Close finishing prospect between Zhao Grio and Michael Tchaikovsky. That's 6 all. Kristina Zlateva on the hill at 7 1 over GJ Oyen Goran. Former world champion in 1995, Oliver Ortman 5 4 down to Ashik Nathwani. Nick Malai leading Andre Vansner 4 2. 6 all between Mika van Berkel and John Mora. British player John Chapman, 5-3 up on Alex Montpellier. And another British player, Marcel Price, now level at two each with Ramazan Akdag. Jonas Kornmesser on the hill at 7-1 against Bernd Janka. What are your thoughts on his breaking technique overall? Well, he breaks a lot softer than his brother, Catchy, one of the hardest breakers on the circuit. Looks like and Catchy, but Claudio well, proved that in Spain as well. He was breaking at full speed. I think it all depends on is he going to continue with pool? Or is he going to try and chance his arm at getting on the World Snooker Tour? Because both games are just so different. No one's going to master both. It's impossible. There's not enough time on the calendar to do that. Never mind. Even if he wanted to attempt it. So he's got to pick one. I think obviously the fact he's not on the Snooker Tour, he's not qualified. That's why he's probably playing some of the pool events. But as you said before, Michael, decisions are going to have to be made. And if he's going to look at it and say, right, I got to the last 16 of a big event and beat some really good players at the first time of asking, that make a lot more sense. A stick to the pool. A few years ago, if you had any chance of getting on the snooker tour, I think you would have gone for that. But there's so much more opportunity in pool now, it becomes a more viable alternative. Yeah, obviously the tour growing, the more events we've got, the more money. Still at the early stages, let's not get too giddy at the minute. Things are just changing drastically every week, aren't they, Michael? So, like you say, if there's, if there's a big pot of gold there in nine ball, well, you might not need to chance your arm at getting on the snooker tour. And ultimately, whatever you do, you want to become a top player. He's much closer to that in pool than he is in snooker. I spoke about some of the results he's had in international amateur snooker events. And even with all that, the distance he still has to travel to become a genuine top recognized snooker player and get anywhere near the upper reaches of the rankings in that is immense. Already made huge progress in that regard in pool. Yeah, it didn't look good upon cue ball hitting object ball. Don't know if it was a slightly heavy contact. Usually don't affect things too much in pool. But it's gone in, that's all matters for the young man. And it's the first break and run of the match from either player. It takes Cledio Kachi back into the lead at 3-2. Now 5-1 in favour of Bezar Spahu against Christos Papagiorgiou. A fairly short rack, so not much change in the other matches since I last updated you. South African JJ Fall is 
level at five each with Germany's own Holger Greece. And Sullivan Clark on the hill now at 7-1 against Paul Taylor. Making the one ball again. Obviously the cue ball's gone in. I made quite a lot of balls and all. Three balls, was it? Yeah, three balls plus the cue ball. Two scratches now from his four breaks so far. Okay, so another opportunity for Uzbek. Yeah, also Uzbek scratched as well on one of his breaks, so... Last time he had ball in hand and he tried to pop this two ball in this middle, he missed. I don't expect that to happen again. It's very rare. Probably the biggest story of the day, Chang Yulong has been beaten twice this week. He's out of this year's European Open. Been a good day for stories. I think Stuart Bingham's success is in there as well. And maybe you could argue so so a such a young player beating the very experienced Tony Drago. Yeah, Tony Drago's gone as well. He's out of the tournament. So this is loser's side action tomorrow though. Wow. What a lineup tomorrow is. There's some big, big matches in winner's qualification round. And if you want to see the draw, just head over to matchroompool.com. You'll find the bracket on that. Yeah, and there are quite a few matches, actually, apart from those heavyweight clashes that you're alluding to there, where there are players who are at that level where they're just trying to prove themselves and show that they might have what it takes to become top-level players. A number of guys in that category are up against big names tomorrow. That's all part of the narrative as well. Yeah, one standout match I'm looking forward to tomorrow. I think it's at 11.30 a.m. Jason Shaw versus Johan Chua. What a match that promises to be. Two German legends. We'll battle it out. Ralph Suke plays Thorsten Holman. Yeah, Joshua Filler playing Karol Skowerski, who's maybe come back onto the scene a lot over the last year. A number of matches there as we go down through it where you see younger players who are coming up against each other. Just below that very elite level, the likes of, say, Tyler Steyer against Sanyan Pelovanovic. So, scratch off the break from Claudio Cacci, but he ended up winning the rack anyway. And for the first time in the match, there's more than one in it. It's now 4-2 in favour of the Albanian teenager. So looking at some of the scores then of the other matches going on. Former world champion Oliver Ortman just one behind at 5-4 against Ashik Nathwani. John Morris turned it round against Mika Van Berkel. He's on the hill now. Morris leading 7-6. Damien Massey, who was on the main table today. Level at 5 all against Christian Surdea. It's been a match of scratches from Catchy, but this time it's a lot better.
don't think he can chase the nine ball. If he does, he's got to hit the two onto the nine very thin. Maybe tempted if that is there because the two ball may go towards the right centre. Could even go off the pink four. It could flick the pink four ball and still go in the right centre. Only he knows if he tried to play it off the edge of the nine or if he tried to just go straight for the putt. It was never going to be easy regardless. Marcel Ackard, one of the best known referees in the game. Knows Alexander Osbeck well. In fact, they've played each other a number of times back in Germany. Marcel reliably informs me he has beaten Osbeck. Been bragging, has he, Marcel? Oh, that wouldn't be his style. This is Billy Thorpe and Saki Kanatlar. Kanatlar at the table. Two all. Steadily trying to make his way back into prominence on the international stage. Talk about the Americans looking for more top class players. If we're going to see breakthroughs, Billy Thorpe would be one of the most likely, you would think. Yeah, he, he had a spell of being in the Moscone Cup, quite regular. And as I say, the last couple of years he's been less present for various reasons. If you are looking for someone who might become the next American to be regular at the business end of events, he'd be up near the top of contention. Well, that is a nice roll. Nearly fluked the nine. He, well, he's having a good look. Has he left the potting angle? You can definitely see a piece of the three ball. But can he see enough to pot it in the top left corner? There's that story about Marcel saying that he's beaten Alexander Uzbek, reminiscent of the well-known snooker referee Laurie Annandale, who beat Stephen Hendry when Hendry was only a kid, and then, despite many requests, refused to ever play him again so that he could hold on to his lifetime 100% record. Good safety shot there from Alexander. Spinning the cue ball round to hook your opponent. This is a loser's side match, so that means it's a race to eight. And if you wonder what that means, we start with 256 players. We're playing double elimination until we have 64 players left. 32 players will come through undefeated, and 32 players will come through with one loss. And then we simply do a redraw. The undefeated play the one loss, but it's still the last 64 single limb, and that's how it all works out. It's got a feel of three stages, this competition, because once we get to the final 64, it's single limb, but players are desperate to get to the final 16 because that's when the bright lights, the cameras, we go live on TV. Hill Hill finish going on on table three. Mustafa Alnar of Cyprus has just made it 7 all against the Romanian Flavian Glant.
Yeah, Flavian Glant. He's a well-known Romanian, but not for his pool, Michael. Oh, yes. Remind me, you told me this. Is he a magician? Something like that? Mm, no, but... Close? Yes. Them type of lines, yeah. Go on. Can't believe I've got you with something. Yeah. He won Romania's Got Talent. Oh, right. For speed Rubik's Cubing. Of all the skills that people have in life, the Rubik's Cube is the one I can't get my head around. I was actually only doing it a couple of weeks ago, and it's just impossible. Well, he can do it blindfolded in about 20 seconds. be fair if you enter a talent competition and you can do that it's going to take something very spectacular to beat you can you win the decider against Mustafa Alnar we'll find out shortly I think he's fluked it yes he has Saki Kanatlar has won that fifth rack that we were looking in on against Billy Thorpe. So he now leads 3-2. Well, what about this for a shot? I know he fluked the previous one, but he has come with a beauty there. He has played a couple of iffy shots apart from that opening rack, but at times it's been hard to believe it's the same player we were watching at the start of the match. Fearing for his prospects of making any impact on the contest at all. And there you see, though, that tendency hasn't left him entirely. He's mixed the good stuff that he's produced in the last few racks with moments like that. Yeah, it's just very bizarre because the previous shot was wonderful. And then that was dreadful. Well, that feels like a big moment in this match. Every chance to get back. Only one behind and still very much in it. Instead of which, it's going to go 5-2 to Clerio Cacci and in a race to eight. That's a handsome advantage to enjoy. Christina Zlateva has won. She's beaten GJ Oyen Goran 8-1. And will now play Zhao Grio in the next round on the loser's side. Grio coming through 8-6 against Michael Turkovsky. So the winner of that match between Grio and Zlateva will be one away from single elimination. Saki Kanatlar back at the table in the next rack against Billy Thorpe. Sullivan Clark still looking for one more. Paul Taylor hanging on, but a long way back for the British player. He trails 7-2. Another British player, Damien Massey, is just levelled at 6-all against Christian Serdea on table 5. And Jonas Kornmesser has won. The Austrian coming through 8-3 against Bernd Janka. And will now take on Pia Filler after her win over Pong Nam Pam by eight racks to five a little earlier. Billy Thorpe's under a little bit of pressure here. Playing to stay in the event. He's got a long four ball. Good pot, didn't quite get the cue ball back. We'll keep you posted how that match unfolds. going to be a push out can't see enough of the two ball
Here comes the push out. Looks like he's rolling the cue ball. There. If we can see enough of that ball. I think he's got to play this ball regardless. Even the kick shot off the back rail looks quite inviting. He could get the two ball back up table. And there's a lot of balls, but it actually looks like he can see enough of the ball to pop. Yeah, he could. It was a strange old push out from Cladio. Yeah, he's not on the three ball. But why would you leave that shot? News of another winner for you. Canadian John Mora. Struggling for a while against the young Dutch player, Mika van Berkel. He's turned it round. Mora, who we saw playing for Canada at the recent World Cup, has beaten van Berkel 8-6. Looks very tight if you can see an edge. I think he's trying to cut this ball off the left rail and just get it on the bottom rail. Oh, where's this going? It's no good. Given the inconsistent nature of Uzbek's performance so far, you have to feel if Kachi takes this opportunity to go 6-2 in front and only two away from victory. It would be almost impossible to see any other outcome than a Kachi win. Not sure that's how he played to get on the floor, but it's actually worked out okay. Billy Thorpe's under pressure. He's now 4-2 down. Loser of that match is out. Yeah, winner of it. Likely to play Adam Stankovic, who's on the hill at 7-4 against Romanian Dan Cristea. Just wants to be a bit careful here. These are always a little bit thinner than that camera angle tells you. Very easy to hit the near jaw. He'll send the cue ball round the table for the green six. We've all done it, Cladio. We've all done it. Yeah, that's a better angle. Look how thin that is into that tight side pocket. So just as I was saying, there was a chance there for Kachi to move himself close to the brink of victory. Certainly Uzbek has another opportunity. Put himself right back in contention. He's lost four racks in a row since he was 2-1 up. Rubik's Cube practice for Flavian Gaunt because he's out of the tournament. Lost that deciding rack to Mustafa Alnar. They will now play the Dutchman Tim de Ruyter. In losers round three.
This could be tricky as well. It's not easy to get the cue ball down for the nine. Yeah, so he's he's done okay actually. He's left himself a shot. But he has proved to us that he misses a few balls. And I have it on good authority. He has a reputation in Germany for missing important nine balls. Hasn't missed that one though. He's still hanging on in this match. It could easily have slipped away from him there. Would have been very hard to see him coming back from 6-2. And only two adrift now, and 5-3. Let's have a look in on table two. Billy Thorpe battling to stay in the European Open. And he's got a good chance here to close to only one behind. Former Moscone Cup player. Elsewhere, Nick Malai closing in on victory. 6-3 up on Andre Vansner. Oliver Ortman has work to do to stay in the tournament. 6-5, he trails Ashik Nathwani. JJ Fall is on the hill now. 7-5 over Holger Greece. And a close finish between Christian Serdeya and Damian Massey. That one is 6-all. Billy Thorpe does indeed get back to only one behind. Alexander Uzbek has the opportunity to do that. If he can take this rack, he's still battling away. 5-3 down. Well, that was very thin. Actually lucky to make the ball there. Look, just look at the purple five ball all alone up top. Watch the cue ball there, way too thin. Often when you hit it that thin, the ball stay down the bottom of the table. It's a bit of a miss hit. And he can actually go rail first here. He'll definitely attack this ball. Looks like if he does pop the two going off the rail, cue ball will go into the eight ball. So he's going to need a little bit of luck there somehow. I'm certain he'll have a go at this one though. Jeremy Jones is sat front row watching Billy Thorpe, I think. Skylar Woodward's there as well. And Skylar Woodward's definitely there. Yeah, great pals, those two, Skylar and Billy. Remember how much fun they've had playing together in Moscone's past. And there's the rail first. These are the shots you sort of want to go for into the top right corner. You can get the cue ball bouncing off that right hand side rail back over for the pink four. Is he having a go? It's close. Maybe back in the day. Not now, buddy. Four inch pockets. They just don't go in anymore. That would have gone in, though, back in the day. That wasn't that far away. Here's another look. Yeah, that only just grazed the rail. We were writing him off at a very early stage in the match, some of those early shots he played, but... He's showing his capability since then, Osbeck. Just peppering it with too many unforced errors. That one doesn't fall into that category, though. This looks nice, Carl. Yeah, well controlled. Had to get the cue ball back down table. Wasn't a case, I just popped the ball. Needed to get position. Now you, Michael, I thought this was going to be completely one-sided. Cledio's not been clinical. This is a big rack for him now. A little bit straight that if the six ball doesn't go past the nine let's just walk around to see if it will go in the bottom left pocket 
Yeah, it's not over, not over yet. This one needs a good positional shot. It's short of pace. This. Yeah, rightfully getting the magic wrap removed. When you're practicing, you just leave it on the table. It never really affects a shot. But in a match, for some reason, you always have to get it removed. It's just something about that match environment. It's just maybe a tiny distraction you could do without. Yeah, I think because he can only hit a, an edge of the six ball. He is concerned. Now, what's going on here, Michael? I'm a bit... I don't know. What's no, I think it, so Scott put in the marker so that he could remove the seven to facilitate taking the rack away. Yeah, everything seems to be in order now, so yeah, I'm not really know, sure yeah. what the problem was. OK. It seems to have gone back where it was to me. Yeah, I don't think he could pop the six. I think he's playing safe. Well, he could pot the six, okay. Maybe Cledio was thinking that he not quite put the marker where it was because the pot was very tight, but anyway, it's all history now. It doesn't matter. He's made a good pot. He needs another good controlled positional shot off this one. The position's gone wrong. I think that's a prime example of inexperience. A lot of the top players would have drawn the cue ball off the side rail and gone past the eight ball. You can put a firmer stroke on that type of shot. Decent enough safety, but he's let Alexander back to the table. He's already made one good bank in this match. Is he going to go for another? Thorpe still going well. He's levelled now at four all against Saki Kanatlar. Over on table two. He's having a good old think about this. I'm not really sure what there is to think about. It's not like you've got 50 options, is it? You've, you're either playing the bank shot into one of the corner pockets or you're playing safe. And there's not loads of safety options. I think he's forced into the bank shot, into the top right corner. Oh, no. Oh, no. That is not... That is not what he wanted. And even with some of the unexpected things we've seen in this match, I think we can pretty much mark it down as 6-3 from here. So Claudio Cacci does indeed move to within a couple of racks of a place in the next round. Sullivan Clark is already there. It's all over in his match against Britain's Paul Taylor. Clark putting his heavy defeat to Stuart Bingham behind him with an 8-2 win over Taylor. And he'll now play either Christian Serdea or Damien Massey 
They're level at six all in their match. Let's have a look in on table two. I told you Billy Thorpe has got it back to level now at four all against Saki Kanatlar. Looking at some of the other matches, Nick Malai has a 6-5 lead now over Andre Vansner. It's gone hill-hill in the Anglo-French clash between John Chapman and Alex Montpellier. Another British player, but from Wales, Marcel Price, level at 4-all against Ramazan Akdag. Needs the two ball to keep running. He's got to get past the side. It has done. So still close going there. Back here on the main table, Claudio Cacci is within sight of the finish line. He now leads 6 3. at the end of day two, Carl. And I've not seen a golden break yet. Have you seen one anywhere? That's a very good question. Don't believe I have. I mean, we've been commentating in all the same matches, but I've not even seen one out there in the arena. Just wondering if you had. It's unusual to get to the end of day two. Still not have one. Yeah, it's just something you can't really account for. I remember the World Pool Masters, Max Lechner. I think he had three out of four or five breaks at one point. It was insane. And it was a real theme for the week, that. Across all players, or most of them anyway. What a chance this is to get on the hill. Gladion knows it's not been an ultra-solid performance, but we say it a lot, it's just about getting the win. Get through to tomorrow, regroup, and come back, try and qualify for the final 64. Different experience for him to some extent, compared to what he had in Lugo. It was all an adventure there. All very new, first time playing in a tournament like that. Comes here now, there's a bit of a name, not one of the top stars or anything like it, but someone who has a reputation now at this level. But of course, that's all in other people's perception. He may well be able to shrug that off and continue to play with the same mindset that he showed in Spain. Being the second break and run of the contest for Kachi. Always makes you feel very relieved when you get yourself on the hill. Yeah, he's been ahead for most of the match, but this is his biggest lead yet. Fedio Kachi leads 7 3. No further progress to report from table two. Still in the relatively early stages of rack nine between Billy Thorpe and Saki Kanatlar. Four all in that. Daniel Guttenberger of Austria just needs a couple more racks to set up a meeting with Nick Vandenberg. Guttenberger 6-1 ahead of Patrick Munjuri of Romania. Six all now between Ashik Nathwani and Oliver Ortman. Pretty close as well on table 15 where Nick Malai is 6-5 in front on Andre Vansner. Kachi needs one more. Small chance. It's not a fantastic chance, but he can cut the two ball in. 
but how do you get on the red three ball? Cue ball would have to travel up towards the brown seven, so it may cannon that. May play safe, I wouldn't blame it. Yeah, he's had a go. This is not bad, actually. I don't really know if he played it that way. But it's okay. This is going to be one of his strengths. We were talking about his game before, Michael. The fact that he's a very good cue, he stays very still. Potting of the ball. He's always going to be high up there. Just stroked it in with ease. Absolutely top drawer from Claudio Cacci. And I was just about to say, if he can complete the job here, he'll come away from the match feeling he's put in a strong finish. But as I was about to say that, he's gone wrong on the five. to table two, Saki Kanat Lar looks to have given away rack nine against Billy Thorpe he was angled by the points of the middle pocket I think he actually put himself in that position couldn't make contact with the eight coming round the houses Billy Thorpe with ball in hand looking set for a 5-4 lead there will be going over to that match once this one concludes Well, ball in hand, one good shot now from Claudio. Just get on the sixth ball. And you're through to tomorrow. A pretty horrible way for Uzbek's campaign to end. His big adventure playing here on one of the main tables. Failing to make contact at all when he wasn't hooked. Different level of challenge for Claudio Cacci tomorrow. And he plays Ko Ping Chung, one of the men in form. And as I was saying, Cacci beats some pretty established names during that exciting run in Lugo. In any case, he's not through to play Ko Ping Chung just yet. Still just the slightest bit of hope then for Uzbek. Very thin to cut this ball in. It's actually achievable, but... He never seemed to attempt it in a match, although he has, and he's done well. What a shot that is. Can't tell you how thin he's hit that. Staying alive is Alexander Uzbek. Well, don't forget earlier today, the last match that you and I did, Carl, when Skylar Woodward looked like he was going to win 9-4 against Damian Massey. Missed his chance to kill it off unexpectedly. Ended up losing... Not only that rack. A couple more before getting the job done. So Alexander Uzbek is still here and still punching away. 
to 7-4. Yeah, this match should be over. Cleo Capci, ball in hand. Very easy table layout. Didn't get out. Now he's got to sit and wait to see if he gets another chance. Six all between Ashik Nathwani and Oliver Ortman. Nick Malai on the brink of going out. He trails Andre Vansner 7-6. It's gone hill-hill between Britain's Damien Massey and the Romanian player, Christian Serdea. Tom Stavely on the hill, 7-5 against Tommy Tokop of the US. Also hill-hill between John Chapman and Alex Montpellier. Still no outcome to that. Marcel Price, the Welsh player, 5-4 down against Ramazan Akdag. These are the matches going on as we move towards the very end of this second day. I thought we were heading for the end of this match. But an unexpected reprieve for Alexander Uzbek. He took it to close to 7-4 down. Drag break straight back out the chair for Cladio. Well, what a way for it to finish. A rather abrupt conclusion to it. So, Cledio Cacci led for most of the match. Looked like he was going to finish it off in the previous rack. And look at that. The nine going down to complete an 8-4 win.